to another exciting edition of the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast. This is Game 7 of the state's tournament. I uh, nearly forgot to mention the tournament because it's in my rearview mirror because I won. Oh, I won. Oh, I'm so I'm not used to this. Let me just let me have this. I'll be done. Just this. Yeah, sure. That's all I want. Just this. Okay. Okay. (sighs) With me today, (laughs) we have Kells. You're the worst kind of winner. Do you know that? The that worst. Guy. Happens so infrequently. I have no practice at it. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> and we have Andy. I started a podcast that I have no chance of winning. Oh, I couldn't see that Davo had beat me. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's about right. Spot on. <laughs> Hello, late up Raiders. <laughs> we have we have the sensei Neil. Hey everybody. Hey, you guys want to play some trivia? Yeah. Yes. This is week seven of the states tournament where we celebrate the first 13 states of the United States. Today's episode centers on Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire. Ooh. Whoa. It's a threefer. <laughs> oh, they're tiny, first. tiny. Mm. Menage State. Ew. And as <laughs> as Dave alluded to earlier, he has already locked up this tournament. The way we score the tournaments is the winner gets three points uh, per game. The second place winner gets two points and third place gets one. Of the previous six games, Devo won five and came in second once. Huh. So it's a battle for the basement, although honestly, Andy would have to do really badly and Kells really well for Kells to come out of the basement for this tournament. Yeah, which has not been the theme if you've been paying attention to past six shows. But still very possible if you know me. I mean, I just need Devo to be like mid-grade gas for this one. <laughs> just me great i don't need you to be 87 i need you at 89 okay yeah so how what kind of kingmaker do i want to be oh for do i want to be worm eight? tongue oh my goodness do i want to be this, little this finger what do i want to do what do i want oh, to don't do don't be little finger goodness gracious don't be little <laughs> <laughs> just writing a note for myself never let Devo win a tournament again it's got to stop here, Andy. It's, uh, we, yeah, it really we does. Have to declare the monster it. has been released. Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys are done. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that was. I was done last show. Oh, oh my. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> Not the <laughs> but dumb All right. All right. All right. So the way the game works is each week we have a theme. And within that thing, we've got six categories of four questions each. Each question is worth 10 points with a few bonus points thrown in here and there. And then a final question, which is worth up to 100 points. And as I said, today's theme is Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire, which is probably our longest theme ever. I think so. Yeah. And we're going to... St- oh, by the way, the tournament and most of this episode was provided by... Um, Dan and Allison. You were going to say Danison, weren't you? <laughs> he fought it. He really fought it. I'm so happy. I actually should say Allison and Dan because Aladdin. Allison is not getting enough credit on this show. And it would be alphabetically <laughs> correct. Mm-hmm. And in case anybody's confused, it's not our Allison. It's Dan's Allison. Or Allison's. Allison's Dan. I, I don't know. You know what? I'm just yeah. going to yeah. stop there. <laughs> All right, category one. Well, hold on is, a moment there, Neil. What? Oh, oh yeah. there, there is the special rule for this tournament, which is taxation. The way that works is, say, Andy were to get a question right, then if Kells taxes Andy's answer, he would get 70% of Andy's points. He gets to do mm-hmm. that once a game, and it's been a, a big, big deal in this tournament i like that rule um mm-hmm. i'd like for the record to show that even though he has hemmed up 
this tournament, he cannot use himself in the negative in the example of the taxation. He, <laughs> I didn't just, use myself. You're worse than Triple H in video game commercials. <laughs> <laughs> All my wrestling fans will understand that, Neil and Andy. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. It's all right. All right. So, category one is Connecticut Inventions. Connecticut Inventions. Conventions. Inventions or it's conventions? Inventions. Oh, okay. Question one. Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin in 1793, but he wasn't able to make much money from it. So in 1798, he accepted a contract to mass produce what item for the U.S. government? Locked in. Locked in? Well, I'm going to lock in and tax Andy. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's so disrespectful. The first question? <laughs> yeah. You are animalistic, sir. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty sure bet Andy's got this one right. So, yeah. I mean, if you're going to tax it, might as well tax it when you know he's right. Yeah, I mean, that would be the point. All right, Kells, what's your answer? I said uniforms. Devo? Uh, I don't really know. <laughs> so, so you wrote nothing? <laughs> I wrote, I don't know on my paper, but I figure I'm getting seven points out of it anyway. There you go. Yeah, Andy. It's like Devo is walking up to the plate now and just spending all his time waving at the fans and getting the crowd going. In the box, um, too. Not even. Yeah, not in even, the box. Just yeah, he's in the box. <laughs> disrespect. Uh, it's a mass-produced rifle. The idea was a rifle with interchangeable parts. The, uh, the answer I have is muskets, but I'll give you rifle. Hmm. I don't know if they were rifled muskets or not. Ooh. What year? 1798. Probably not. It's no, probably they, muskets then. I thought the, if I understand correctly, Andy, the uh, the rifled musket in the Civil War was kind of a shock. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's why I'm saying so. It's... accurate and can hit me from a long way away. <laughs> so this would have been, this would have been a musket. So I don't know if you want to accept that answer or not. I say zeros just so Davo didn't get points. Hey. That's just hey. how I feel about it. <laughs> well, I am. I'm going to let you figure this out, Sensei, because this is one of those situations where, honestly, either way, I win. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually behind fewer points if I don't give you any points. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm not going to argue this at all. I'm just going to stand back. Given that fact and the fact that Davo's kind of being an ass, <laughs> I'm not going to give you credit because rifles were not invented. Wow. Well, they weren't rifled until later in the... I had to scratch out my seven points. Ah, oh, Davo. Which means... <laughs> Sweep the leg. <laughs> you have a problem with that. All right. I'm done being a... An ass. I hope so. Oh, I'd like to believe that. I really you, would. You can. You, you, you may want to be yeah, mad. You, you might. You might want to get mad, but you know, you brought this on yourself. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. I know it. All right. Question two: What brand name, which has become a generic term, is derived from a Connecticut pie company and is now the main athletic equipment used by the AUDL and the Raleigh Flyers? Locked in. What? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Now remember, locked in. Devo. Frisbees. Yes. Andy. Frisbee. And Kells. Frisbees. Correct answer is Frisbee. So the Frisbee wasn't invented in Connecticut, but the company that, or a company that was making a flying disc saw kids at Yale throwing these pie tins from the Frisbee pie company. Oh, wow. Mm. On campus. Mm. And so they kind of appropriated that name. They spelled it differently, but that's how the Frisbee got its name. Frisbee Pie Company. All right. Question three. In 1846, Elias Howe founded a company in Bridgeport, Connecticut to manufacture what machine whose descendants are still in common use today? What is it? Locked in. I have an easy mode if you need it for half points. I'm driving to the easy mode. <laughs> locked in? I do want the easy mode. Okay. So Kells and Andy are locked in. Devo wants easy mode. 
The easy mode is it's used in the textile industry. That wasn't my idea. All right, I'm locked in. All right, Andy. The sewing machine. Tells. Not the micro machine, but the sewing machine. <laughs> and Dave. Not the mystery machine. The <laughs> sewing machine. <laughs> is the sewing machine. So, Andy, I figured you would have gotten this from one of two different ways. Could you? How did you know this one? I'm just curious. Did you wow, know the two I, ways? I, I mean, first is your general knowledge of history. Honestly, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I knew this off the top of my head. It's not something I use in class or anything. But I don't know where I acquired this information. But as soon as you asked the question, I knew it. Have you ever seen the movie Help? Yeah. Of course. Have you ever seen the end credits of Help? Yeah. I'm not. They credited the move the the movie to Elias Howell, the inventor of the machine of the sewing machine. God, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's exactly sure why. They think it was probably just some kind of obscure joke, but yeah. Okay. Those, those beetles. Those <laughs> clever beetles. Those pesky liver puddlians. <laughs> <laughs> Question four. Charles Goodyear didn't invent rubber tires, but he did develop a process that was used in his Connecticut factory to produce much more stable tires. What process did he invent? Locked in. Locked, Locked in. in. Kels? Vulcanization. Deva? Vulcanization. And Andy? Vulcanization. It is vulcanization. It's a logical progression for the tire. You actually pinch the rubber you in do. such a way. Mm -hmm. It knocks the rubber plant unconscious. Right. It's easier to harvest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At the end of round one, Davo has 25. Kells and Andy are tied at 30. Which brings us to category two, which is geography. Hooray. Okay. What three states border Connecticut? Ooh. Connecticut. I'll give you four points each, I guess. Uh, locked in. Uh, I'm locked in. Oops. Yeah, I'm locked in, but I'm uncomfortable with my third. I was missing an obvious one. Deva? I said Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New York. Oh. Andy? New York, Massachusetts for sure. And I'm not comfortable with Rhode Island, but that's what I have for my third. And Kels? Rhode Island is like borders it on its east. Massachusetts is north of it, and New York is west of it. Hmm. You are all correct. Woo! All right. Question two What Canadian province borders New Hampshire? Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, locked in? This is where I'm going to look stupid. This doesn't feel right. I'm locked in. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to go with it. I'm locked in. All right. Andy? Ontario? Kels? I was thinking Ontario, but I, I wrote down Quebec. I feel wrong about it. Deva? I'm exactly in the same boat as Kels. I wrote Quebec. Correct answer? Quebec. Woot! Yeah. Question three. If you want to get technical, Connecticut doesn't have any ocean front because it borders an estuary. What is the name of the estuary that makes its southern border? Pass. <laughs> an estuary. I'm not even sure what an estuary is. Um, I'm locked in. Do I sound dumb or do I? Um, I'll sound dumb. I've done it millions of times on this show. I've already won this. I can sound as dumb as I want. <laughs> it's <a> freedom, <laughs> I feel. It's intoxicating. And you want the name of this estuary, correct? Uh, yes, that is what I'm asking. All right. Um, I am locked in. All right. Let's start with Kels. Pete. <laughs> Pete. <laughs> Deva? 
So, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm still laughing over Pete. <laughs> Just Pete. All right, I'm Pete. <laughs> Shout out to my brother Pete. Had to, yeah. had to ask you where he doings. <laughs> 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 I said the Hudson River estuary. I have no uh, clue. Hudson. Andy? I believe it's the Atlantic Ocean estuary. <laughs> the job of a chimney yeah, yeah. comes with a great deal of yeah. responsibility. Uh, that's oh. fair. Yeah. That's legit. So, Andy, an estuary is just where rivers enter the ocean. Uh, oh. And there are about, I don't know, several dozen rivers that enter the Long Island Sound. Oh, oh fiddlesticks. Oh. And okay. I guess I knew that was called. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. okay. fiddle faddle. That wow. Actually, that's one of those things. I w- yeah, I wouldn't have. If I would have thought about it long enough, I might have come up with it. Mm-hmm. Well, Maybe. I think if he had said what sound. <laughs> yeah. It would have yeah, been a hundred times easier. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> That would have been the only one I would come up with. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Final question in geography is, despite its small size, Rhode Island doesn't have the shortest ocean coastline in the country. What other New England state is six times larger, but has about one third of the coastline at just 130 miles? I'm looked in. But, I mean, my backyard is six times larger than Rhode Island. <laughs> I'm locked in. in. Okay, we'll start with Dave. I think it's New Hampshire. Andy? I just remembered what we were playing, and I looked at the states that were options to me (laughs) and ruled out the other two, which leaves me with New Hampshire. Almost forgot the theme. Kels? Uh, Birthplace of Seth Meyers, New Hampshire. Correct answer is New Hampshire. Good job. All right, after category two, Andy has 52, Davo 57, Kel 62. Okay, still in the basement. And did you say I needed to finish last to get second place? Is that what you said? No. Uh, yeah, if you do poorly and Kel's does well for the next for this game and the next one, then you might slip to third place. Okay. So, so far, we're hanging in there with that plan. <laughs> 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 All right. Category three is hodgepodge. You can't put hodgepodge in the middle of a game. That's oh, crazy. Oh, it's been done. <laughs> crazy. Are you trying to tell me what to do? No, how, no. How to, how sorry, to play sensei. This game? I'm sorry. Mm. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> wow. All right. Question one. Rhode Island has at least one haunted house, which was the inspiration for what 2013 horror movie starring Lily Taylor and Ron Livingston? I'm going to punt. Locked in. Lily Taylor and Ron Livingston. That's a horror movie. I'm still going to punt, but I'm (laughs) I'm pondering. I was trying to remember who. I know Ron Livingston. Like, I'm just, why do I know Ron Livingston? Yeah, I'm not going to come in tomorrow. In fact, I'm not going to come in for the rest of the week. Just not feeling it, Bob. I'm locked in. Okay, let's start with Andy. Uh, the ghost of Ray Guy. <laughs> and Kels? The Conjuring. And Devo. Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. Kick is away. There's a high, twisting, hang time spiral. Correct answer is The Conjuring. Yeah. I think... Uh, it had a budget of like twenty million dollars and grossed three hundred million in the theaters. Wow. I forgot Ron Livingston was in that movie. He was the dad. I just, yeah, I, I associate Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. Is, is that how you mm-hmm. say her last name? Because they're I don't know. the stars, but Billy Taylor and Ron Livingston are the parents in the very yeah, they, they they seem more recognizable to me. At least I recognize them. Oh, very recognizable. But I don't really know uh, actors nearly as well as Kel does, who <laughs> recently was on the Hollywood Cast Connection podcast, right, Kel? I was, and I had a great time. I was a part of the the Full Circle Tournament. Mm. Yes. Yes. How'd you do? I think I, I brought honor to my house. <laughs> as long as my you house. brought honor to the house of Brain Lane, we're okay. That, 
that is my house. My house is Blaine Label. I brought honor to us. By the way, that's what you call a segue. Oh, that was smooth. Smooth. nicely done. Buttery smooth, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, question two. Rhode Island is known as the Ocean State, and as such has 21 of this type of building along its coastline. Locked in. Locked in. Oh, locked in. Andy finally Kels? came up with Shell Station. Uh, lighthouse. <laughs> Deva? I was thinking the Conoco. Uh, <laughs> lighthouse. And Andy? Honestly, all I could think of was Beach House. <laughs> that was an absurd answer. Wow. <laughs> you know how you does that? Few people in Rhode Island. One of 23 Beach Houses. <laughs> They are highly sought after when one comes oh up on the market. So <laughs> premium. <laughs> I have Lighthouse, obviously. <laughs> Correct answer is Lighthouse. So, Trivia Nugget, I think we might have talked about this on the show before. Do you know what state has the most lighthouses? Oh, we did talk oh, about this. We did. It was one you I thought it was a weird one. Yeah. Mm, California? I think it's... Nope. I think it's like it's on the Great Lakes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, it, is it Minnesota or Michigan? Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. it was on the Great Lakes. Yeah, like 120 some odd lighthouses. That's a lot. All right, question three. There are literally tons of granite that come from New Hampshire. Thirty thousand tons of New Hampshire granite were used to build the Thomas Jefferson Building in Washington D.C. What organization calls the Thomas Jefferson Building home? Locked in. Locked in. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had it before recently. I have a logical guess. I'm locked in. Deva? The LOC. It's for me. Yes. Andy? Library of Congress. And Kells. Library of Congress. It is the Library of Congress. Because after the War of 1812, that's all we had was the Jefferson Library. Um, this building was built in the, I think it was started in the late 1800s. Okay. I think before that, it might have, it was, I, don't, I think it was in various buildings, but. Yeah, and it burned in the War of 1812 when uh, D.C. Was, was, was burned by the British and it was born by Jefferson. the little, little Debbie Cake Company to right. <laughs> exterminate their greatest rival, Dolly Madison. <laughs> <laughs> but Congress then bought Jefferson's library off him because Jefferson was kind of broke. And Jefferson had the most amazing library in the country at the time. Hmm. Which was like 6,000 books or something like that. <laughs> He had every one of the Hardy Boys books. Every single one. <laughs> every first edition Louis L'Amour. Mm -hmm. All right. Question four. The official nickname of Connecticut is the Constitution State, but one of its popular unofficial nicknames includes what spice? Ooh. It's either posh or baby. Locked in. <laughs> <laughs> That is a welcome addition to the show. <laughs> it really you. is. We've been looking for that. Now we're an FM morning talk show. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there we go. We've crossed the threshold into oh, 19. Tune in for Nickelback. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. <laughs> this is Rod Zilla, and you've tuned into the hot FM 100. <laughs> I'm locked in with a. You know what? I'm going to stick with the theme. I locked in. All right. Let's start with Andy. Well, I know it's not baby or posh, so I went with ginger. Okay. And Kels? I said old. <laughs> and Devo? I said nutmeg. Correct answer is nutmeg. Ooh. Really? Ah. Nutmeg state. Not because it grows nutmeg. In fact, nobody's really sure why it's the nutmeg state. It might have been because sailors brought nutmeg back from the islands or hmm. nobody really knows. 
All right, at the end of round three, Andy has 72, Devo 87, and Kells 92. Wow. All right. Which brings us to state symbols. Dread yes. easy here. Question one. What flavored beverage was introduced in the early 1920s and was designated as Rhode Island State Drink in 1993? It can be found amongst other flavors like strawberry and chocolate. Locked in. Ooh. Flavored drink. <laughs> strawberry. You son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I'm locked in. I have no idea. If it's milk, I'm going to be unhappy. <laughs> but they're late to the milk party, as it were, mm-hmm. being in the 90s. Locked in. Okay. Let's start with Kels. I said a milkshake. Andy? I was torn between malted milk or a milkshake and went with milkshake. And Devo. I went with the milkshake as well. When and how you sweet is a vital part of curling? Is it just milk? No, it is coffee milk. What the hell is coffee milk? Okay, okay. Milk. It's milk with coffee flavoring added to it. Oh. Um, Not actual like coffee? strawberry and chocolate. I, I would like to just address this directly with Dan and Allison. Um, we, we don't need your money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're Are you asking here. them to unpatronize us? I am. I. I. I know that is. I. 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 I I'm done. I'm just. I. It was funny for a while. <laughs> I played along. Everybody laughed. Everybody had a good time. But now they've crossed a line. With coffee milk, that's what crossed the line. That's what did it. Seven games in, and this is your breaking point. <laughs> If there are any more milk questions in you this know, category. You know it's going to be, so just just fix your face for it. You're good. You got this. Well, there you go. All right, question two. The state animal of Connecticut is the largest tooth predator on the planet. Which species of cetacean is it? Locked in? I would have guessed the lead singer of Tears for Fears. Wow. That's <laughs> pretty... <laughs> That's so mean. Goodbye, my friend. <laughs> I'm locked in, by the way. Oh, all right, I have a guess. All right, let's start with Andy. The whale. More specific? Uh, Looking for a species. Crap. Sperm whale. Deva? I said an orca. And Kels? I said beluga. Correct answer? is the sperm whale. Oh. If you think back to Connecticut's uh, early economics, the it's based around whaling, specifically sperm whale. Uh. Yeah. They were second only to Massachusetts in whaling. Mm. Thank you, Herman Melville. I thought that, but I couldn't remember what kind of whale it was until I said orca on my mm. paper. I wrote orca. It's like, oh, the sperm whale. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, they they named it the their state animal rec- fairly recently, partly to honor their history and also because it's an endangered species and they want to help raise awareness for saved whales. Question three. This round orange pulpy fruit is New Hampshire's official state fruit. What is it? Large pulpy fruit. Locked in. Locked in. Ah, uh, why not? You only live once. I'm locked in. <laughs> Devo? Pumpkin. Kels? Pumpkin. And Andy? Apple. Seriously? What? You said orange. <laughs> Pulpy. Oh, I didn't hear the orange part. Large orange. Is it orange? Pulpy <laughs> fruit. Pulpy <laughs> fruit and you said apple? I missed the orange part. <laughs> Fish stick. <laughs> no, I didn't hear I orange. You were joking. Oh, okay. The correct answer is pumpkin. <laughs> oh, you, your orange apples are pretty good. 
I was I was wondering if one of you were going to answer orange. I thought it. I, I wrote down the letter O. I'll be honest. I wrote down the letter O, and then I said, "Wow, that's dumb." I, need to <laughs> yeah, I suspect they don't grow very well in New Hampshire. Yeah, the climate is bad <laughs> for oranges yeah. in New Hampshire. All right, a final question here in uh, state symbols is: What is the state motto of New Hampshire? I'm locked in. I know this. I know this. I know this. Oh yes, I do know this. Yes, locked in. Okay. Let's start with Kells. Uh, I, I wrote down, don't fear the reaper, but I scratched that out and said, give me liberty or give me death. <laughs> oh, you're close. And don't fear the reaper? I was close with that. No, no, no. no. Live free or die. Oh, okay. Yeah. Live free or die. Your answer is live free or die. How do y'all just know that one? <laughs> it's on their license plate. Yeah. All right. After category four, Andy has 92, Kells 102, and Devo pulled ahead with 107. Uh, <laughs> very Harrison Ford of you. <laughs> yeah. So category five is famous people. People. Question one. What Pulitzer Prize winning poet wrote some of his most famous poems in New Hampshire? And I have an easy mode. I'm going to need it. Um, locked in. I'm locked in too. All right. Uh, easy mode for Cal's for half points. He took the road less traveled. Yes. Uh, the two people jumped in my head really quick that are wrong. Um, you know when Frank Herbert was writing Dune, he was a janitor in a high school in San Francisco. You are the worst. There's your sci-fi <laughs> doings. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> It's uh, <laughs> uh, okay. All right, I'm I'm locked in. Okay, Devo. Frost. Kels. Robert Frost. But you know what jumped in my head first? Jack mm. London. And then right after that, Jack Frost. And I could not shake. You. <laughs> <laughs> You're sunk after that. <laughs> Jimmy Jack Frost, and I don't care. <laughs> So, Dave, uh, but to clarify, I'm going to assume you met Robert and not Jack. Uh, yes, I met Robert okay. and not Jack. Andy? Robert Frost. One of his collections of poems was called New Hampshire, mm. and it is Robert Frost. Question two. This American author who was raised in Rhode Island gained international fame posthumously. He is known for his horror fiction novels. Who is he? I feel like this is a trap. If you want an easy mode, I'll tell you the year he was born, I suppose. I'll take that easy mode. I'll take the easy mode. I'm locked in. Okay. Dave was locked in. Andy and Kells want the easy mode. He was born in 1890. I don't know if this would make my guess any more right or wrong, but I'm locked in. I'm locked in. And if I'm right, you know what? I'm... I don't know why I've been second guessing myself. I don't know why I took the easy mode. I'm right. Uh -huh. And what's throwing me off is Devo's response. <laughs> I'm beginning to realize he's playing me. So Devo, I am taxing you. I am wow. taxing you in the face. Wow. Wow. And he golf claps you for that. <laughs> that whole impassioned speech and you got... Let me answer first. <laughs> okay, Andy, go ahead and answer first. It's H.P. Lovecraft, isn't it? Maybe. I don't know. We'll have to find out. Devo, what's your answer? It's H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. <laughs> and Kels? I looked at my laptop and got some inspiration, and I said, H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the correct answer is Hewlett Packard Lovecraft. <laughs> I am not kidding, Devo. Lovecraft leaped to mind, mm -hmm. and you were dead silent, not locking in. The longer you were silent, the longer I'm like, no, nah, it's not Lovecraft. Who is it? I was trying. Well played. <laughs> uh, that was just my first. I was like, man, it's probably Lovecraft. <laughs> I was like, but you don't know that. And then I got an easy mode that didn't help. So <laughs> It helped me because I just put it on my blackboard. 
Oh, yeah. Well, laptop to the rescue. Thanks, laptop. <laughs> when I was in high school, I loved Lovecraft. I tried to read him again recently, and I mean, it's just ponderous to read him. It is thick. It's really, really hard to read. It is. It really is. All right. Question three. This soft rock singer was born and raised in Connecticut. He's a two-time Grammy and six-time American Music Award winner. Who is he? Soft rock. I'm locked in. Soft rock. I don't do the soft rock. We know. <laughs> I could give you a super easy mode if you wanted one. No. I'd love a super easy mode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I want a super easy mode. I, I, I'm going to guess I even know the easy mode, he's going to say. Wow. I'm going to lock in with what his easy mode is. Wow. <laughs> he is. Y'all were giving me grief earlier. He's trying to, he's going one-on-one -on -one with the sensei right now. I'm mm. gaming the game. I'm, I'm playing the game now. I'm in the game. Okay, so Devo and Kels both want the easy mode? Yeah, I'm going to take it. Yes, I want the easy mode, please. So the easy mode for half points, he was not in the movie Office Space. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Locked in. I am wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Why should I change my name? He's the one who sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's start with Andy. I thought it was Barry Manilow. And I thought your easy mode was going to be when he said super easy. I thought you were going to say he writes the songs that made the whole world sing. Oh, that would have been a very easy mode for Barry Manilow. Uh, yeah. Devo? I celebrate his entire catalog. It's uh, <laughs> Michael Bolton. <laughs> and Kels. Michael Bolton. Quick answer is Michael Bolton. Why don't you go by Mike? <laughs> Mike Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> and finally... What Connecticut native was a four-time Best Actress Academy Award winner with a win in the 1930s, two in the 60s, and one in the 1980s? Locked in. Locked in. 1930 to 1980? Mm-hmm. Crap. I am... You sound, you sound flummoxed. Flummoxed. I can't imagine. I... I'm punting. Ooh. Bring up Ray Guy. Oh, uh, Andy. This is what it sounds like when doves cry. <laughs> <laughs> Deva, what's your answer? Catherine Hepburn. Kels? Catherine Hepburn. And Andy. Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. Kick is away. There's a high, twisting, hang time spiral. Terms of endearment or on Golden Pond? On Golden, on Golden Pond. Pond. Right. But she wasn't right. in terms of endearment. No, right. There it is. Now I got it. Yeah. So, Kells, what was significant about her 1960s awards? Uh, let me see. Did she win them back to back? She did. All right. So, that is the end of round five. Andy has 114, Kells 127, and Deva 135. Just have to pass, Devo. So our final category is brands. Brands? Like brand names. Okay. Question one. Invented by George de Mestral, this product was inspired by spiny cockleburrs found in Switzerland. And now it's a global company headquartered in New Hampshire. What brand is it? Locked in. Locked in. I'm going to lock in and I'm going to text Andy because he was super confident. Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm locked I, in. You know what? I'm not even mad because I am so proud of figuring out Davo there at the last minute. <laughs> I was kind of holding my breath. He's a game yeah, within the game. Yeah. He went, he went yeah. eerily silent was the thing. Yeah. That's hard, yeah. man. He didn't it's act. Hard. He, he didn't act. You know, he wasn't like... Uh, yeah, he wasn't but, making yeah. any dumb noises. Yeah. It's it's hard for David to pretend to be as dumb as you guys are. Wow. <laughs> That's not That's, at all what wow, said or wow, meant. Wow. I think we're all locked in, Neil. Let's move on quickly. Nope. <laughs> no, let's let's stay in this for a second. Just for a second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, just, mm -hmm. yeah, just, 
I'm so, very sorry that he made that illusion. I was mm, not thinking that at all. That's mm. not what you were thinking? No. <laughs> oh. Mm. Andy, what's your answer? Velcro. Devo? Velcro. And Kels. Velcro. Correct answer is Velcro. Mm. Question two. What famous toy company was founded in 1923 in Rhode Island by the Hassenfeld brothers? Locked, Locked in. in. Locked in. It would be like Mattel or something. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Whammo. <laughs> yeah, whammo. Okay, Devo. Hasbro. Kels? Hasbro. And Andy. Hasbro. I made that one too easy. Uh, I appreciated it. Question three. This famous candy company, although headquartered in Austria, has much of its candy made in Connecticut. The dispensers are mostly made in China. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Kels? Pez? Andy? Pez. And Devo? Pez. It is Pez. So, do you know what the word Pez stands for? No, I didn't. Is it an acronym? No, it's kind of a weird shortening of the word, of the German word for peppermint which I'm not going to try to pronounce, but there's like, it starts with a P and ends in a Z and has an E in the middle. So oh, okay. they just kind of short. It's like pfeffermints with a Z or something like that. Oh, wow. Question four. Although this print and digital document management company is headquartered in Connecticut to computer nerds like me, it's no, it's more notable for its Palo Alto research center where many of the prototypes of modern personal computers were invented. Locked in. Now I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Okay. Let's start with Andy. Xerox. Mm. No. Crap. I said HP. And Love Kells. I said Xerox. <laughs> I said Xerox. <laughs> Correct answer is Xerox. Dang it. All right. Our final scores before our final question is 147 for Andy, 165 for Devo. And 174 for Kells. So our final question today is, you know, the three states that are our theme mm-hmm. are all in the top five, or I guess bottom five states by area, mm-hmm. right? Rhode Island, mm-hmm. of course, is the yeah. smallest. So I have a list of the bottom 13 states so I need you to name me the top or the bottom 10 that aren't one of the three states in this quiz. So the smallest states that don't include these three states. Yes. Okay. While these nincompoops think of some answers, why don't you sit back, crack open a cold one, and listen to these messages. In 1957, Laika became the first animal to orbit Earth. What kind of animal was Laika? What is the only team in the Big Four North American Sports Leagues which shares its name with one of the Avengers? And here's one more question for you. Are you the type of person who enjoys playing trivia games, learning new things, and having a bit of fun along the way? If you are, or if you just want to find out the answers to those other questions, then our podcast, Quiz and Hers, might be right up your alley. Each week, one of us writes new trivia questions for the other person, covering everything from science to history to pop culture to sports. And every question in a game relates to some theme, like Game of Thrones, internet memes, sandwiches, or animals in space. Some of the themes make more sense than others. So if you like trivia, learning, or real couples testing each other's knowledge and patience, check out our podcast, Quiz and Hers, part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Quiz and Hers, the trivia podcast where we test each other's knowledge and the strength of our relationship. Did you enjoy that cold one? They're back now. This is actually harder than I thought it was going to be. I mean, once you get up to a certain kind of size, a lot of them are. (laughs) Once you get rid of three of the smallest, it's harder. (laughs) Yeah. Seven. I also hit seven. Me too. Eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 ten, ten, eleven, twelve. (laughs) Seven. (laughs) <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> yes 
Oh, we have become a bad radio show. <laughs> All right, I'm just guessing at this point. I've got my 10. I'm locked in. Yeah, I'm locked in. All right. So let's get to our answer. So obviously uh, Rhode Island doesn't count at number 50, but Delaware at 49 does count. Oh, Yay. got it. Got it. Connecticut at 48 wouldn't count because it's in the show. And New Jersey at 47 does. Oh, got it. I forgot all about New Jersey. Crap. And then at 46, we've got New Hampshire, which wouldn't count in this case. Mm -hmm. But Vermont does. Got Got it. And Massachusetts at 44. Got it. Got it. So did anybody pick somebody that or pick a state that's west of the Mississippi? Yes, I I did. did. Uh, Was it Hawaii? Yes, it was. (laughs) Then you are correct. That's the first one I wrote down. Then we've got uh, Maryland. Got it. Maryland. Yep. That was the one I almost forgot. So for comparison, Rhode Island is about 1,500 square miles. Maryland is 12,000 square miles. Whoa. Wow. The next one on the list is up to 24,000 square miles. Is it West Virginia? So a big jump between Maryland and West Maine. Virginia. Yeah. West Virginia. Oh. Mountain. I have West Virginia, but I thought Maine was smaller. And then um, South Carolina. From 24,000 for West Virginia, we go to 32,000 square miles for South Carolina. South Carolina. Crap, don't have it. Let's get it. 35,000 for Maine. Got it. Maine. There it is. Come on. And then kind of a surprise to me, 36,000 square miles. Indiana. The 13th largest is Indiana. Yes. Indiana. Oh. Sweep it up. Let's go. Wow. <laughs> All right. So let's start with Andy. How many did you get? Eight. Eight. Ooh. That brings you to 227. You're currently in the lead. Goodness Davo. Gracious. I got eight. Oh. Eight. <laughs> brings you to 245. <laughs> and you have the lead temporarily because, Kells, you got all 10? I believe I did, sir. All right. Wow. Brings you 100 points to 274 points and the win. My first W in a minute. Let's go. I completely forgot. About Massachusetts and New Jersey. We actually <laughs> talked about them. I oh, don't know man. what happened. Oh, man. Well, congratulations, Kells. Thank you, my good man. And thank Kels you. Kells making a play for second place here. Hey, man. Hey, left the door open just a little bit. Just a crack. <laughs> thank you, Allison and Dan, for your wonderful tournament questions. We are genuinely appreciate it. I appreciate it greatly. Me too. It's been a nice break for me. (laughs) Neil likes the break. (laughs) So from all of us here at the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast, this is your MC Davo with Kells. To quote a great, well, he's not from any of the three states in this quiz, but he's from Florida. A great poet. Unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not be in, but the cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. So (laughs) handy. (laughs) <laughs> so long, ladle brainers. And the Sensei Neil. Ladies and me bags, the state song of Connecticut. Yankee Doodle went to town. A riding on a pony. Stuck a feather in his cap. And called it macaroni. Yankee Doodle keep it up. Yankee Doodle dandy. Mind the music and the step. And with the girls be handy. What? <laughs> That's the official uh, Yankee song Doodle, of keep it up and be handy with the girls. I'm a little troubled What's by up? this song. Hmm. I, I need to I need to look at genius the genius lyrics on that one to see. Yeah, no write this down, see what this means. <laughs> Signing off. Like Red Green used to say, if the girls don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> That's actually a saying around this house. <laughs> Uh, greetings and salutations all you good trivia people out there. I know what you're thinking. Hey, I really enjoyed this show. Uh, how can I get a little more? Well, here to help you out. You can look up these good people on Twitter at Little Brain. Or if Facebook's more your deal, you can look them up at Brain Little Productions. Hey, they've even got their own webpage. It's uh, BrainLittleTrivia.com. Uh, now, if you're feeling generous... 
you can join a Patreon, where if you donate $10 or more, you can even get yourself a fancy show invite. How about that? Until we meet again, this has been 44, and I'm glad you joined us. Hope I'm out. Hey, Andy, do you know who is credited with the Wilhelm scream? Oh, this was on a podcast I listened to called Film Sack that I really enjoy, and I can't remember. There, there's a couple of clues I could give. I'll try with, he was the vice principal, I think, on in, in the movie Hoosiers. Okay. Okay. Does that ring any bells? No. <laughs> no. He had a novelty song in 1958. Novelty song in 58. Let's see. Uh, uh, Spike. Nope. Not Spike Jones. Stan. Nope. Steve. It has a color in the name of the song. Purple People Eaters? Yep. Ooh, Ooh. who did uh, the Flying Purple People Eater? One eyed one. one Shed Woolly. People Eater. One eyed one. It was Sheb Woolly. Sheb Woolly? Oh. Shed. Wow. So we were wow. ironically quite close there, Andy. Would not have gotten that in a million <laughs> Spike, years. Spike, Stan, and Sheb. <laughs> <laughs> Inventions. Things that were invented in Connecticut. All right. This is probably the most esoteric category since Norwegian death metal or mall. <laughs> yeah. It's up there. Oh, that was a great category. It was so fun. I love that category. Wouldn't it suck to be like the heir to the Frisbee Pie Company fortune and know that you mess, missed out on a billion dollar opportunity because you spell your name with a Y? <laughs> it's actually an IE. Oh, an IE. It's, it's an one IE. letter difference. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that Larry Nimoy developed the Vulcan neck pinch for the show because he didn't want to punch people because he didn't think that was logical for his character? I did know that. That's your mm-hmm. sci-fi doings. Oh, no. No. <laughs> My money orders through a competing resort. Cal's <laughs> your cab is there. Um, yeah. Just, I'm, it's it's your me. Your cab has been waiting say, for five here. minutes. That's here. Oh, that's, that's Simon playing office. in the car. <laughs> <laughs> <Is it really? laughs> he likes to honk the horn. Um, we we learned the hard way. Or not the hard, could have been worse, but like we I've been letting Emmett play in the Toyota, except the Toyota is keyless push button start. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. I'm sorry, guys. We're not good. <laughs> Everybody wants to rule the world. You get a cheeseburger anywhere. <laughs> People, <laughs> it, keep, it keeps them coming back. <laughs> I'm trying to think over Is the here. atmosphere and the uh, attitude. <laughs> how much you want to bet I can throw a football over the mountains? <laughs> I have okay. a place in my classroom where I have Pez dispensers. And I learned just the other day that the Pez dispenser is designed so you don't have to manually load the candy piece by piece it actually is designed so when you put it in there it unwraps it automatically that is a lie (laughs) no i saw a video of it oh my goodness a whole video was it on tiktok (laughs) it must have been true then there's no way anybody could edit a video on tiktok Don't, no, don't, that, don't, don't. that has been confirmed by the Pez company to be a hoax. It is. Oh, really? True. I felt okay. Man. I did not know that. Yeah, it wow. was a TikTok. It was a TikTok, you Andy. Andy, don't don't feel bad. Really? I once thought that Michael Jordan dunked from the half court because his arm stretched <laughs> really. And then I found out it was just a movie and he couldn't do that. I hate every no, single I thought, one of I you. saw that and I was kind of convinced, but. I mean, it looked convincing. It looked I pretty convincing. I said, I thought that doesn't sound right. So I used my Google machine okay. and found out that it is, in fact, not true. Well, I'm glad I'm glad I didn't try it because I promised myself the next time I went out to reload my dispensers, I was going to try it. But all right. Thank you for correcting me in your usual respectful <laughs> manner.
I appreciate you not so making me look stupid. like a complete <laughs> idiot in front of. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All these people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I got it. I got it. <laughs> uh. The preceding podcast was presented by Brain Ladle Productions. All rights reserved.